Our first guest has been serving the residents of Niagara as a provincial and then federal representative for 27 years. Anna Annunziata retired last week as many constituents dropped by Tony Baldinelli's Fort Erie constituency office to wish her well upon her retirement. Anna, congratulations Thank on this you. big life step and some emotional moments the last week. Oh my God. Um, first of all, I've been very humbled by all the people that remembered um, to come in and say goodbye. And, you know, um, a lot of them I still knew by name, uh, a lot of the uh, issues that we resolved. And um, it was heartwarming to see um, that we were, you know, that we could be there, you know, um, to help them in, when they need it. How know? did you get into this line of work? Oh it's, it's not something that people really know exists as an option. And, and you spent 27 years doing this. Well, it's funny you should ask that because, as you know, I'm Italian and um, my parents took us back to Europe uh, a few times and my grandfather, um, after the war, he used to be um, what you would call a lead hand or a supervisor in one of the mills. So after the war, it closed down. A lot of people in Europe had been either uh, affected by uh, something during the war, so they used to come to my grandfather for advice right. or options. And my grandfather, believe it or not, was illiterate because in those days you didn't go to school. But he was one of the smartest person I knew, so he was able to advise him or give him some option or application to file for pensions and stuff like that. But he was smart enough to hire someone that knew how to write and read. So he would make sure that the letters were dictated, uh, applications were completed, and then he, then he would bring them down to the offices in either Rome or Naples. Right. And every day my grandfather used to travel the train and bring these applications firsthand wow. to, the, to the people. And then they would reply and they would get, and people would come. And I saw this because I came to Canada when I was only five years old. Uh, my father came uh, as a worker uh, on the railroad. And so I was about eight or nine when we went back because my mother really missed her family. So we went back and I could see my grandfather doing all of this and people coming in and they would pay him with eggs and chickens and <laughs> things like that. But my grandfather would, was like clockwork. He would take the train in the morning and at a certain time he'd come back. He was dedicated to his he community. Was really? Oh my God. And they used to, you know, my grandfather was well known, you know. Um, so he did that. And, and you wanted to do and, the same and, thing? And I don't know. Maybe I did. I don't know. At that time, you know, I just... Then one time I was... Uh, when we went back, when I was about 11 years old, um, and my grandfather, his assistant, his secretary, had passed away. And so he was about to retire. He's, he thought, you know what? What am I going to do? He didn't want to hire anybody else right. or take anybody on. So he would say to me, and he would get letters, and people would still come. He said, Anna, could you please read because as soon as you read the first sentence, he knew exactly what it was all about. Right. I said, but no, no, you know, Italians, no, 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 I don't know how to read Italian. He says, yes, you do. He says, you know how to read English, don't you? I said, of course, just sound it out, because Italians sound out. So I sounded out, he said, okay, got it, got it. And that's how I learned how to read and, and write Italian. Wow, so uh, that's, that's a, uh, you another know, step Yeah, here it that's... was another step. And then, as you know, new immigrants, you know, you have aunts and uncles and friends, they didn't know the language, so they always came to me to either make phone calls or do their paperwork. And I've been doing this since I was a young person. And then when I got married, I moved to Fort Erie, the best thing I ever did, best thing I ever did, moved with my husband to Fort Erie in 1967. And, um, you know, then eventually found a job, and I was lucky enough to, find, uh, to, to work for Monarch Massage as a, in, in their payroll in their um, uh, office. And, you know, you, you pick up a lot of things. You pick up things uh, with duty, uh, you know, taxes and what, what is free, what's not right. free, and so forth and so on. And then you have auditors come in. And I learned so much. I picked up so much from them. And you never, it was always a, build, uh, a bridge builder. Like, you always knew these people and you always connected with them. So then it progressed that the company relocated and um, I had to get into another field. And... Also, being part of the community and seeing a lot of people um, at the time, I was way before my time, uh, retirement homes, nursing homes, where do you go? So I thought, oh, you know what? I know office, but I don't know medical part right. of it. So I'm going to go back to school. 
and I went back to school to Niagara College and to take a PSW course. And after I took that course and worked at the hospital in Niagara General and at Douglas Memorial, I thought, you know what, I'm going to open up a nursing home. Didn't know how hard it was to open up a nursing you home. You opened up a nursing home? Yeah. Really? <laughs> I, I was looking through the through, uh, uh, real estate and I found this uh, retirement home in uh, Crystal Beach that was in bankruptcy and I bought it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and um, it was it was difficult. It was difficult because it was way before, you know, um, uh, the need. So I only had about eight patients. So, you know, trying to get more and more and long term care was funded, but this was not a long-term right. care, it was a retirement. So checking out all what was available for funding to assist because they were on limited uh, income. Um, I found out a, a lot about retirement homes, nursing homes, and that's where I acquired the knowledge for that. And then after two years of not just contributing and whatever, uh, my kids were in university. We needed a little, the finance, you know, were you know, a little tough there. So. I decided, um, I took on a, a partner and I said, you know what, um, you have family that is able to help you. I didn't. I didn't have any brothers or sisters or whatever. So I said, They'll, they're going to come in and they will be able to assist you and if you only give them whatever. I said, why don't I sell it to you for exactly what I paid for and when you have the money of my down payment, you give it to me. Right. And that's what she did and that's how I got out of that. And then I went to work for Friendship Festival, and that's where I met Tim, who I've known as a little boy, but we worked together on Friendship Festival. And then the election came on, he went as a candidate. So was Tim still working at the border at that time? Uh, no, he had gone to um, Tim Hudak Walmart. Is yeah, who we're Tim Hudak, about. yeah, the MPP, you know. Yeah. He was working at Walmart, believe it or not. And then he decided that he wanted to come back to Fort Erie. Right. And then he was working with the economic development, which was also assisting Friendship Festival. So he went on to work with Friendship Festival, and I started working with Friendship Festival for that one year in 1995. And Tim decided to run as a candidate, and he won. And then he asked me, could I work for him? That was, that's how it happened. You know, that stint running a nursing home prepares you for helping a lot of the constituents who are likely That's to reach right. out it, to. Absolutely, it, it taught me so much. And all the work that I did, uh, working for Monarch Massage for uh, over 12 years until they closed down, doing payroll, doing EI, do, remitting uh, you know, uh, taxes and, and, and uh, duty drawback and all of that, it helped me. And then I also went um, after that to a nonprofit organization where I learned a lot from that. and they learned a lot from me too because I was able to navigate the system pretty well. So all my jobs brought me to the point where I was. Right. And they were, it's always useful to learn more and more. There's, I have an old saying, the old lady wanted to get older so she could learn more. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still learning. I'm in my 70s and I'm still learning. 10 years with Tim Hudak. 10 years with Tim. 17 years uh, 17, split between Rob Nicholson uh, yeah, uh, and now Tony. Well, yeah, and Tony, Tony tells no, me people yeah. that aren't even from your constituency oh, yeah, they call, will reach yeah, out to they you. Call, they'll call or they'll remember that we helped them. And sometimes, you know, they'll say, because everybody says they recognize my voice. So they recognize my voice so they know it's Anna. Or when they first call, it says, uh, are you Anna? Or is Anna there? You know, that's the first thing they do. And um, I usually remember what I did for them rather than the name, and then it comes back to me. But I always remember what did we do, you know? Now tell me, because I know Tim, <laughs> and I know Rob, and I know Tony, Yeah. but do you really do all the work? Are you really the one who does all the no, work? You know what, I've always said they're the key. <laughs> yeah. Without them, we couldn't do anything. But you're the face in the well, local Well, because they're up in Ottawa, they're yeah. up in Queen's Park, they're, out, you know, they're busy doing the big stuff the important stuff, policies and, you know, other issues and answering to, uh, you know, uh, the opposition or, 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 or they're the, the people in, in power and they have to answer to other people. So they're busy enough. Um, so they need, constituency work is basically trying to solve people's problems. And you have to understand what their problem is so in order to be able to assist them. So you have to talk to them. You know, sometimes they call you and they don't even know themselves what 
they're exactly. looking for. You've got to figure out what you've got to figure for. out what they want. You know, so in conversations you pick up and you know exactly. And once you know how the system works and and how everything is resolved, then you know what they need, and you're able to get the you ask the right questions, you get the information they need, you pass it on. And I've been very, very um, blessed, that's the only word I could use, that anyone, anyone that I've worked with, with any of the agencies, agencies, regardless if it's CRA or Service Canada or passport offices, they've been fantastic. You know, uh, the bureaucrats don't get enough kudos or they don't get enough uh, acknowledgement because right. they're the ones, again, they're the ones that do all the work. They're the ones that are able to look into the file and find out what the problem is and get a result. Because you know, sometimes things sit on desk or sometimes things get lost and they need that little nudge or that call to say, you know what, this person is in financial needs or this person has really got problems. Could you see what you can do? Right. You know, and and you know? you're gonna be so hard to replace and oh, I don't know about so that. I don't know about that. But I, I'm sure I'm sure whoever is taking over my, my position will do just as well. We you know? wish you all the luck in retirement. I, I thank you so very much. So much. And you know what? Um, if you don't know, just ask your MP or MPP.